today I'm going to go over some base, some of the basic functionality of the ggplot package. Some basic ideas about how it works and a few trivial examples just to get you started. The truth is it's way too big to exhaustively demonstrate it. It's one of those things where you kind of just need to see the basics and then you can just go from there. The first thing I'll do is create some data. In this case here, this is a really simple data set. Just take a look at it. It's a just a series of numbers, 100 numbers, integers. And this is a situation where maybe you have a bunch of data and you want to create a plot, a bar plot, in which the bar plot graphical element, or the graphical tool, does some of the data processing for you. Because these data are not in a in a, any sort of structure. It's not a table. It's just a series of data. And so one option is to, I'll just load the library here, one option is to use the, the actual graphical tool to do that work for you. And I'll do it in one step here using the ggplot function. So here I'm calling the ggplot function. Inside it there's these arguments. One is the data set that I'm going to be using. And the other one specifies this aesthetic mapping, which basically tells us how the data are going to be displayed. So how the data are actually going to be visualized. So this sets up the plot area. Uh, doesn't, rep doesn't actually show me anything, however. To show me something, I have to add this second element. And this element is going to tell me how to work with the actual data. What am I going to represent? Here, I'm, it's, it's going to be a bar plot, and I'm specifying uh, this this stat equals count is basically going to turn these data it's going to aggregate them and plot those aggregate values so if I just run it like this you see that we get a bar plot out of it so I the original data are it's just a series it's just a vector just a series of data it's actually a data frame but it's a series of data and I'm using this little function to actually do some of the work for me another situation we might have though let's say I actually want to uh, work with data that have been aggregated. So I'll what I'll do is I'll just really quickly aggregate some data. I'm using the aggregation function, which is maybe not the best way to do this or the fastest way to do it, but it's my preferred way. I kind of do things the same way all the time. And so um, I'm creating a new variable in this data frame. It's just an observation. It tells you how many observations correspond to each uh, record or row. And then I do the aggregation, which is summing on that observation variable. You can see a, a video I made on aggregation functions to learn about that, or the aggregation function. And then I'm just going to rename the variable. So I've just turned these data in this unstructured form into the structured data, where I'm basically summing up this value, these values. I'm summing them up. I'm basically creating the data that look like this plot. Sometimes you've got the data tabulated, and you want to graph that. So we can do that, too, with the same package of functions, ggplot, specify the data set, specify this mapping, this aesthetic mapping, and in this case, the aesthetic mapping, I'm specifying an x and a y, the x being the x-coordinate, running on the horizontal axis, and the y, the vertical axis. And it's working with the aggregate data now. And I specify stat equals identity, which means it's going to take the values I'm specifying, and it's not going to be aggregating them. And we get the same plot. So you can work either way, data that have already been tabulated, or you can tabulate it with the function yourself. Now you should have a sense of how this whole function works. The basic idea behind ggplot is you create this little plotting area, and then you just add things to it. You can add labels, you can add titles, all sorts of different stuff as you go. I'll just show you an example of that. So I'm going to create the same graphic, but I'm going to specify some things here. I'm going to delete this one here. So um, I've got, I'm calling this little function, using the little function, I'm specifying a data set argument, I'm using the aesthetic mapping, I'm putting a color here to specify the color of the, in this case, it's the actual background, I think. Uh, interesting, I'm not sure that this is necessary, we'll see. Um, so I'm setting up the little plotting area here, then I'm setting up the bars, specifying a red color for the the bars themselves with a white fill. And in this case, I'm assigning everything into this little P 
object. So this, I'm putting all the, the graphic elements into this little uh, placeholder, this object, this graphical object. Now, nothing is plotted yet, but if I want to plot it, all I have to do is select that, and it will plot. So I'm not sure I actually needed this. I'm going to delete it and see what happens, because I don't think it's required. Yeah, it didn't do anything. So, so uh, basically it looks exactly the same as last time, except I've specified... I specified... Yeah, I've specified the, the fill color and the outline color of the bar plot. Now, this basic idea where you create a graphical object and then choose to, to render it or plot it to the scene or not, um, based on whether or not you actually run this little chunk of code, the actual name of the plot. It's like pl printing a data object. If you select that object or you just type the name, it will print it out to the output window or whatever output system you're using. But this is how basically assembling graphics works in ggplot. And in fact, the plot utility or uh, package that comes in base R works the same way. So let's say here I've got this P already made. Right, there's P, it's already made. I'm going to add something else to it. I'm going to add a title. So I'm going to add a title. And now I want to add some labels to the X and Y axis. On the X axis I'll put the word the labels and the Y axis count of observations. So I'll run that. And finally I want to have a theme. I'm going to use the classic theme to change the look of the background because I, never, I, don't, I don't like the way the background is. So I'm going to change that, that background. I'm going, to, I'm going to add, I'm going to simplify it by using this classic theme. And now I can render this graphic again and I get a more traditional looking bar graph. Okay, so that's how you add things. I'm just adding, I could progressively, progressively add more and more of these elements to this, to this plot. Now I want to try another plot, just one more little example here. So I'll create some more data. Here I'm creating a data frame with, if we just take a look at it, it should have three variables. Don't, the names don't matter in 100 observations. And this time I want to use the same, I want to use ggplot again, but I want to scatter plot this time. So I want to basically illustrate the relationship between these two variables graphically. So here's, I'm calling this function. Here's my, the data that I'm using. Here's the aesthetic mapping. I'm basically sh showing it that I'm going to map out this relationship between X and Y. And I'm going to add points, these red points. So that's now going to be the new graphical object. And if I want, I can take a look at it. There we go. We see, oh, all right, that looks nice. Now let's say I want to put a line on this object. There's a lot of ways you could do this. But if I want to put a line, and, I, and let's say I just I decide ahead of time it's going to be a linear line, I basically want to plot out a line that the best fit line, the linear regression formula, basically rendered on, on a line, showing the relation between x, the the relationship between changes in x with respect to changes in y, or vice versa. So what I can do is I can first run this little, use the linear regression function here. So it's estimating an equation, a linear equation, based on these two variables. And then once I've estimated this, I'm outputting predictions of this equation into a new variable here. Then what I can do is add those predictions to this line, to this graphical object. Right? Like this. Now I've added the line. If I want, I can just go like this and it plots that line on the graph, right? So you can just keep adding things to graphs in R this way. So you just add this little plus, adds the something to the, to the graphical object, and then you plot that graphical object. Here's another thing. Let's say I want to add an, yet another line. I want to add the mean. So I use this little function here. I calculate the mean of the series, and I generate 100 versions of it here, and I assign that to this vector mean line. And then I plot it. I add it to the plot the same way everything else. I'm just saying plus geom line. I'm adding this line. Same way I added this line, but this line will now have different data in it. I've given it a different color so that we can distinguish them from each other. And there we go. We should now see the line I just made. And you just keep adding things this way. And that's the idea. You see these plus signs in ggplot. Well, that's what the plus signs correspond to. They correspond to adding these elements in this way.
And that's all I have for today.